In this video we're going to be reviewing the first Borderlands that was released. It was released in 2009, so that is 12 years ago. And I'm going to let you guys know if it's worth buying and if it's worth playing in 2021. So I want to talk about what I do like first, so the price. The price is $14.99 for just the base game on the Xbox Store. Or you can pay $24.99 for the full game and you get all of the DLCs. Now considering this would have been, when it was released, £40 for the, the whole game and then probably £10 per DLC, that would have been about £80. Instead of that you're getting it for $24.99, so I think that's really good. Which leads me to the second point, the replay value. Not only do you get a lot of gameplay just playing for the story when you're playing it, you also get good replay value. Once you've completed the sec the first story, you've got the option to play it through a second time. Now you can play it through a second time as the same character, and you can continue leveling that same character up against uh, bosses that are harder and unlock more loot. Or you can play it through as a, as a different character. There's four different characters you can play it for who all have a different action skill. So there's huge replay value in this game. Now another thing I like is the game isn't too long. I hate playing games that you play in the game and you just you just you're bored of playing, you just wanna get to the end, you just wanna finish it. I never felt like I was doing that with Borderlands. I was playing it, I was enjoying it, and then I finished it, and then I decided to play it through the second time as um, the second playthrough on on the same character to level up even more and unlock even more loot. So that was really good. What I also liked about the game was that there was a, a, a large variety of different enemies and all the different enemies have different skills that, that, that you have to look out for like they might have uh, an electric gun so it gets rid of your shield straight away or they might have a uh, really good health or something uh, but deal low damage. They all, I felt like all the enemies, they look different and I felt like there, there was, there was, it wasn't just shooting the same thing which would have been so boring because this is a shooting game and you're shooting the whole game pretty much. You didn't want if it would be so boring if you were just shooting the same look-alike enemy or the enemy that has the same skills as the as a different one. So I felt there's a good variety of enemies. There's also a big variety in loot. There's loads of loot. There's shields. There's guns. There's uh, grenade mods. There's character mods, and there's there's loads of each individual one. So there's loads of loot to find. The only thing I found about this was that. It was hard to find better weapons. Oh, there's nothing better in a Borderlands game than when you find a gun and you just feel like an absolute god when you're playing with it. It's, uh, but I felt like it, it took a very long time until you did find a gun that would overpower the rest of your guns and you could use that and you could feel like an absolute beast playing with it. But there is a large variety of guns. I just didn't like the fact that it did take a long time to find that one gun that was just absolute beastly. And something, something that I really enjoyed about the game, something small, but there was this, uh, in one of the side missions was a claptrap side mission. And you would have to get, uh, there'd be a claptrap, but it would be injured, it would be lying on the floor. And you'd have to go up to it and start the side mission, and you'd have to look for a, a med kit. So this med kit might just be only around the corner, or it might be like um, on a high ramp and you have to get to it. But them claptrap side missions, I thought they were really good, because one, um, they didn't do it in the second playthrough, but in the first playthrough, once you did get that claptrap, uh, fix the game with the med kit. He would give you um, an like an inventory slot, so it would increase your inventory. So you could have more guns or uh, in your inventory. But also sometimes the the clap trap once you fixed him, it would do a little dance, and then it would move around and it would take you to um, say a door or that a, sh um, a chest would be behind, and it would have some good guns in the chest. So I felt that was um, a really good good thing in the game it was something really it was something small it was something a small side mission but I felt I, I really liked that um, that bit of the game what I also wanted to point out was considering this game was uh, released in 2009 it's been remastered I suppose as uh, backwards compatible so it's 12 years old I felt that this first Borderlands game ran better than I remember Borderlands 3 Borderlands 3 had quite a lot of stupid glitches in Borderlands 1, from my whole time of playing it, I think it had one glitch where occasionally you'd be fight, you'd be shooting an enemy 
and the enemy would just be stationary, it would be lock stock and it would just not be moving and you'd be shooting at it. But that is one glitch in the entire playthrough that I've that, that I found. And that ran better. So this game, the first Borderlands game, has ran better than the newest release of Borderlands. So I felt that that, that was just um that was just amazing. Now another thing that they'd done for um, for 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 remastering and improving it was if you went to a chest and there was ammo in it, you you wouldn't have to click on each individual ammo to pick it up like you would have had to do in the first Borderlands. You could just hold down the X button um, and collect all of it. Also, you could walk over ammo and money that that was on the floor and you just collect it. Whereas I remember on on Borderlands One, you'd have to click on it, each individual thing that you wanted to pick up, which was which was so annoying. Um, but luckily, we don't have to do that now. Another good thing they added in was they added in the mini-map in the top right, right corner. They didn't have that in Borderlands 1, originally. You had to always go back to the, the menu and go on the big map on the full screen. So this little thing, it helps uh, in the right-hand corner with the map now on. It helps you navigate a bit easier without having to pause your game and go into the map. So that's, that I really liked. Um, and one more thing I wanted to add was the graphics. Again, the game's 12 years old, and for me, it feels exactly the same and looks exactly the same as the newest Borderlands. It looks just as good as Borderlands 3, so I think that that is just amazing. Now, it wouldn't be a fair review if I didn't say what I didn't not like about the game. Now, there's not much, but there are a couple of things. Now, the first one is the, the Mad Moxie DLC. My god, it was boring. It was basically like the Circles of Slaughter. So the Circles of Slaughter, you have five rounds, and you shoot a lot of different enemies, gradually get getting harder towards the fifth round. Mad Mox's DLC was basically the same, took to another level. So you'd have, you'd have, I think, rounds, and within them rounds there was waves, and you had three Colosseums to do that in. So you had five rounds, I think, of five waves. In three coliseums, and then after that, they had the legendary coliseum. So it was even longer. It was like f it was 20 rounds, I think, with five waves in between each round. And oh my god, it was so boring. It was repetitive. Um, it was boring. Um, no loot was dropped throughout the entire of that DLC. You don't even get anything for finishing it, other than achievements for doing it now that's really annoying to me because i'm someone who likes to get i like to get as many achievements as i possibly can for a game when i'm playing it but that dlc was so boring i didn't even want to play it to get the achievements so that that's something that really annoyed me about the game that dlc was so boring but if you like if you like the circles of slaughter maybe it will be for you personally for me i just thought that dlc was just horrific boring and repetitive and you get nothing for taking your time doing it because it does take a very long time now the only other thing i didn't like about the game was the cormorax the invincible mission now this is like a side mission and it's um, i know all borderlands games have it they have like um the biggest boss in the whole game and it's really hard to kill but this this one is like I have no idea how people do it. It's so so hard. It's literally it's it's near impossible. His health is extremely high. He deals ridiculous amount of damage. Um, so that really annoys me. And again, it's stopping me from getting it. You get an achievement for doing it, but obviously I can't do it. I've looked online as well. That's how sad I am. I've looked online at how to do it, and I have no idea how people do it. I've seen a glitch that um that there is to do. But even I, I even tried to do the glitch and I, I couldn't do it. I didn't stand a chance. Um, so those, so that's that's annoying. But, I, but what can you do? So so those are the the only two things I didn't like about this this whole game as I was playing through it. Now for my final thoughts and the verdict. For the price of the game, the amount of content you get and the quality of content you get, I think it's a really really good price. I think if you're a Borderlands fan. And you either you either haven't played this one, or you haven't played it for a long time. I would definitely come back and buy this one and play it. What I would say though is if, if you if you haven't played Borderlands much, say you haven't played it at all, or you've only played Borderlands two, or you've only played Borderlands three, for example, 
I wouldn't necessarily come straight back to this one. I'd play the others first. I'd play the second. I'd play the third first. I can't give my opinion on the pre-sequel yet because I haven't actually played that one myself yet. But I'd play the others first and then if you enjoy them, I'd come back to this. But if you are a Borderlands fan and you haven't played this for a long time, or you haven't played it at all, like I said, 100% I would definitely come back and play it. Now, that's the end of the video. I just want to say this is my first video. If you could let me know in the comments how you think it was, that I'd appreciate. I know I sound like a five-year-old. But I'd really appreciate the comments and you guys let me know how I got on.